Hi, this is Jason Salemi. I'm an associate professor of epidemiology at the University of South Florida College of Public Health. And I wanted to put just a quick video together to address something that a lot of people ask this question over and over. Um, you know, when we see an increase in cases, was it because of increased testing volume? And likewise, when we start to see a decrease in cases, people want to know, is, is it just because we're doing less testing? And so, I, you know, none of the mathematics behind this is complicated, but I'm hoping that there is a measure that you could track that could really help you to understand the relative changes in cases versus testing volume. So just briefly, um, I'm not a huge fan of the positivity measures. I track them like everybody else. I track three different measures, the two from the Florida Department of Health, as well as the ratio of new cases to new people tested for the first time. But I, I think they are flawed metrics in part, but for this, they might actually be really good. Um, because if you look at trends in positivity, I'm gonna argue that it can help you assess the extent to which trends in testing volume are driving trends in people who test positive for the first time, what we typically call cases. And so just briefly, what I'm gonna run through in this quick video is nine different scenarios, right? So we're gonna compare two time points, and you can think of this as you know today versus two weeks ago, today versus a month ago. Anytime you're comparing two time points, which is often what we're doing when we say, well, what's been the change in, in tests or the change in cases? And we're gonna do nine different scenarios. And the constants of each scenario, right, is gonna be what's happening at time point one, right, the earlier time point. And that's gonna be that we're gonna say, all of these are not gonna be based on a single day's value. That's a really bad idea. All of your estimates should be based on at least seven day rolling averages. So we're gonna say under time point one, about 100,000 people are being tested daily for the previous seven days and the average percent positivity is 7% over the last seven days. And obviously that means that you're having on average about 7,000 cases each day. So that's what we will be observing under the older time point in all of these scenarios. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna vary two things. What is happening to testing volume and what is happening to case positivity? So here's the easiest of all of them, right? In scenarios one through three, the positivity is staying the same. So you should be able to see that positivity is 7% in both time point one and time point two. So obviously if testing volume is staying the same, so in time point two, the, the seven day rolling average is still 100,000, because positivity has stayed the same, the number of cases will be the same. So again, in this case, both testing volume and cases will show a 0% change. What happened if, if testing decreases 20%? So we went from doing about 100,000 daily to doing 80,000 daily. Again, because positivity has stayed the same, we will notice that both testing volume and cases have decreased 20%. And last but not least, what happens if testing increases? So we go from 100,000 a day to 120,000 people tested each day. That's a 20% increase again, because positivity has stayed the same, we'll also see a concomitant increase in cases at 20%. So when positivity does not change, we tend to see that these two measures, testing volume and the number of cases tend to trek together. So what about when we see decreases in positivity, right? So that's an improvement. In this case, for all scenarios, we're gonna be going from 7% positivity to 6% positivity. And so when testing volume remains the same, no change, because we saw a decreased positivity, we'll actually see a reduction in cases. So in this case, if you ask the question, was this 14% reduction in cases just because we were testing less? No, right? It's because a fewer proportion of people who are tested are testing positive. If testing actually decreased from 100,000 to 80,000 per day, again, we'll see decreases in both of these now, right? We'll see a decrease in volume, decrease in cases, but the decreasing cases will be more pronounced. So 
just the decrease in testing volume will not be able to explain the decreases in cases on a daily basis. And even when we see an increase in testing volume from 100,000 per day to 120,000 per day, we'll still see an increase in cases, but it won't be nearly as pronounced. So this is again, another good example where you say, okay, we saw a 3% increase in cases. Was it due to increases in, in testing? And in this case, yes, and then some, right? So we, we were doing a lot more testing, it explains all of the increase in the cases that we were seeing. And last but not least, the last three scenarios is we're now seeing positivity increases or a worsening in case positivity. And so in this case, when we keep testing volume the same, still 100,000 at time point two, we'll see no change in testing, but we will see an increase in cases. So now you ask that question, that 14% increase in cases was not due to increases in testing volume. If you tend to do less testing, right? Again, you might see a decrease in cases, even though positivity is worsening, but the decrease in cases is less than the decrease in, in testing. And last but not least, I think what's most common for us to see is we tend to start doing more testing. So we see an increase in cases, an increase in testing. But in this case, you can see that because the case positivity has increased, the proportionate increase in testing is more than the increase in testing volume. So the increase in testing volume does not explain all of the increase in cases, only a portion of it. So in summary, if positivity is decreasing over time, cases will decrease even if testing volume is constant. Cases will decrease more than testing volume if testing volume is going down. And if testing volume happens to be going up, cases will either increase less than testing volume, not at all, it'll stay the same, or cases may actually even be decreasing even though testing volume is increasing. And on the flip side, when you see that the temporal trends in positivity are increasing, cases will increase even if testing volume is constant. Cases will increase more than testing volume if testing volume is on the rise. And even if you see a decrease in, in testing volume, cases will either decrease less, they won't decrease at all, or they may actually even be increasing. And of course, if positivity is staying the same over time, then testing volume and cases, those trends, will track together. If one is increasing, the other is increasing, it'll usually be at approximately the same rate. And so which positivity measure? I report on my site three different positivity measures. The Florida Department of Health reports on two of them. Um, I'm going to argue that even though I love the one where you take all people tested on a given day, right, temporal trends in that one, the problem with that one is you do have a small proportion of people who are repeat positives. They've already tested positive in the past, and they're testing positive again today. So those people, by definition, cannot be new cases. So again, I, I don't like that because, you know, even though we might be increasing testing volume, you can't possibly, with that small subset of people, actually increase the new cases on a given day. In the same way, I don't like the measure that's based on the ratio of new cases to new people tested for the first time, because that's already ignoring a lot of people who were tested on a given day who could be adding to new case counts, um, specifically people who have tested negative, 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 they could still test positive and add to both the numerator and denominator. So specifically for this purpose, right, all I'm trying to do is understand how are cases increasing relative to testing volume. I actually like the Department of Health's preferred measure, the percent positivity for new cases, in which they throw out from the numerator and denominator people who have tested positive previously. Why do I like that? Because then if a person tests positive, right, in, in that regard, they're adding to both the new cases and to the testing volume. And to be honest, it's not that much different than the measure based on all people tested. Again, I'm not saying that that measure of positivity is the best, but I am saying in terms of what do I look at over time to try and assess the, the relative increases in testing volume versus cases, I tend to like that. And so again, just here's that measure tracked over time. Why is it that we're saying right now, yes, we're seeing more testing being done and we're seeing more cases, but the increases in the cases are outpacing the increases in testing and it's primarily because we are seeing this. This is the weekly report from the Florida Department of Health 
on their preferred measure of positivity. Why I like the weekly measures because they deduplicate those repeat testers within the given week. And so we're seeing pretty big increases since the beginning of October from 4.6% to 7.2%. And so again, that's in part, obviously, this is very superficial. Um, it's a lot about who's actually being tested. You know, there's a lot that goes into this. But if you want just a quick snapshot of are cases increasing more dramatically than testing or, you know, can it explain it or, you know, just trying to understand these two without doing all of the calculations. If you look at what's going on with this positivity measure over time, you can take a pretty good guess. So that's it. Thanks for listening.